Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to our Sunday School Celebration Service. A great time where once a year we can come together and remember those in our Sunday School. Let's start by me reading the words of Psalm 100 to us. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So let's bring a joyful song before the Lord as we sing together. Give thanks to the Lord. something like leprosy, which is a skin disease. Now often when it says leprosy in the Bible, we don't know if it definitely was or it was some other type of skin disease, but it was certainly something that would cause him a problem. When people had this kind of skin disease, people wouldn't want to associate them so much uh, with them, and so it would be a problem for him in his job. So he was desperate to do something about it, but there wasn't a lot 
that could happen. They don't have the National Health Service like we do that can do things to try and help us. And he wasn't sure what he could do. That is until something changed. Um, and it concerns a little girl. <coughs> now, this little girl had had a very difficult life. She actually was a servant to his wife. And the thing we find out as we read through this account in the, God, in, the, uh, in the Bible is that actually she had been stolen away from her home at a young age. The people from Aram had gone into Israel and they had taken her away. We don't know what happened to the rest of her family. It's quite possible that they might have been killed in the raids. And so this would have been a really, we can only imagine how harrowing that must have been for her. And now she was having to work as a servant. But as she looked on at her master, she realised that there was something that she thought she could do that would help. There is something that she, some information she had that she felt she could pass on. So she said to him, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, that is the prophet Elisha, he would cure him of his leprosy. Isn't that amazing? She's only a young girl, but she already has been taught all about the Lord and about his prophets, and she knows of them and knows that they have power to do uh, extraordinary things. So she says, you know, you should go and see this person and he might be able to help you. And amazingly, Naaman listens to her. He is desperate, so he will go anywhere he possibly can to maybe get help. And so he goes to his king and tells him everything that the little girl had said to him. And so the king wrote a letter to the king of Israel saying, um, actually I'm sending my servant to you so you can uh, arrange for him to be cured. Now remember, there isn't a great relationship between these two countries. Remember that they had sent raiding parties in and snatched people out. But uh, the king got this letter and he was worried about it. He said, who am I? Do you think I'm God that I can heal people? I mean, what am I supposed to do? And he thought that actually he was doing it just because he was looking for a bit of a fight. And so he was very troubled and he was upset and angry. Now, not that I want to cast aspersions on anyone, but young people, if you are unhappy, if you're a bit angry, what kind of things might you do to show that you are unhappy or angry? Do any of you ever I can't imagine any of you are ever But do you, what do you do? <laughs> Sam, what do you do? <laughs> Esther, what does Sam do? <laughs> what do you do if you're unhappy? You move away from people. Okay, good. Uh, older ones as well, I think some of us probably get unhappy. What do any of the rest of us do if we are unhappy? Or anxious or troubled about something? What was it you said? You move away from people. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anything else? Eat. You eat. This is a working yeah. segment. Uh, yes, good, we eat. Well, they used to do something very uh, particular in those times when they were unhappy. Um, so I'm not going to do it exactly as we would have done because, well, you wouldn't want to see the result. But if they were very unhappy, they would take the clothes they were wearing and they would rip them up because they were really, really upset and worried about what would happen. Now, a license, by the way, I don't suggest you do that when you are unhappy. Don't go home and start ripping up all your clothes because I will get in trouble. So he ripped his clothes, but Elisha heard about this and he decided to do something. Isn't it funny that at no point did the king think about the prophet that was in his own land, the one who served the God that he was supposed to represent, but Elisha sent the message and said, why have you torn your robes? Make the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Something that obviously the king had forgotten. 
And so what happened is Naaman uh, went and visited the home of Elisha. Now this is the picture that I've got for this, but I think it's a bit inaccurate because the Bible tells us very clearly that Naaman turned up with his horses and chariots. Not just one, he went with his whole entourage to what was probably a very small home. It would have been very noticeable that he turned up. I was thinking what that might look at, uh, look like today. Uh, so this is the road I live in. I guess it would be the same as this happening outside my house. And suddenly, you know, people would have noticed something important was happening, something was going on. So what happened is Elisha sent one of his servants to the door who spoke to Naaman and said, what you need to do is you need to go uh, to the uh, River Jordan and you need to dip yourself in and clean yourself seven times and you will be cured. Now we might think, absolutely brilliant. So he goes and does it, he goes home, they live happily ever after the end of the story. But that's not actually quite what happened. We'll come back to the story and find out what happens next in a few moments. But first, we are going to sing again. Tell me who made all of creation. something that you would like to give thanks to God for, and something you would like to ask God for as well. Uh, so we're going to be doing that later in the service, but I'll give you a little bit of time to think about it. So if you're a member of the Sunday School, on your slip of paper, something that you are thankful to God for, something you would like to ask God for, and we will do that in a time of prayer later. 
But now let us come to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we do thank you that you did create every one of us. You created everything that has been created. And we thank you for this wonderful world. Lord, we do thank you that you are the one that sustains us and guides us and helps us in times of trouble. And how we celebrate this morning in thinking about young people, that group of young people who have just been uh, found well after surviving a plane crash and being alone in the Amazon jungle for 40 days. Lord, how we thank you that you did sustain them and you kept them safe. We thank you for the oldest child, Leslie, that 13-year-old girl who looked after her brothers and sisters, who went through the wreckage of the plane to find food for them and guided them to fruit they could eat and guided them through the jungle to somewhere that she felt would keep them safe. Lord, we should never underestimate what young people are capable of and we thank you for that great answer to prayer of so many people searching for them. Lord, we do pray you continue to be with them and bring them back to full health. And we know this will be a traumatic event for them that will take some time to get over. But we, we just pray for you would continue to be with them. But we do thank you so much for this great answer to prayer. Lord, we know that every Young life is precious. And so how disturbed we were to hear about the stabbings that took place in France this week in a playground. Lord, we do thank you that each of those young people that were stabbed are uh, doing okay, that nobody lost their life and nobody is in a critical con uh, condition. Lord, we thank you for those that tried to intervene and got hurt in the process. And we thank you that the individual that was caught um, is now going to face justice. But Lord, we do pray for mercy for him, because we know, shockingly, he says he did this in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, it was only a few Sundays ago when we particularly remembered the words of the third commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. And so, Lord, as we leave him to your judgment, we do pray for mercy, even in these harrowing circumstances. And Lord, as we think about events happening around the world, we once again pray about the situation in Ukraine, especially with the damage to the dam that happened over the Dnipro River. Lord, we know there has been great devastation, 230 square miles of flooding, and 3,000 people evacuated from their homes. Lord, we do pray that they would know your presence and your comfort at this difficult time. We pray for those who have lost homes and belongings. We pray for those who are trying to help uh, rescue and do other things that are needed. Lord, we do pray for the country as a whole. We know that the conflict with Russia doesn't seem to be about to end any time soon. And we do just pray once again for peace in that place. We pray for those in Russia who turn away from what they're doing. And Lord, we pray for this morning, particularly all the young people that have been affected. Those who are either living in fear in their country or maybe separated from family and living elsewhere. And again, we think of those, as we thought of over the last couple of weeks, those who are sitting at exams in our country in a language that is not their own, in a way that is not what they are used to. We pray that they would again, you just strengthen them and give them what they need at this difficult time. Lord, as we come to our own country, we do thank you uh, for our king and his government. Lord, we know there was a lot happening in the government over the last few days. And again, we just pray for wisdom for all those who are involved. 
We pray that they would turn to you, knowing that it is you that have enabled them to be here. And Lord, we pray for our own country. And we pray that as a country we would turn to you and there would be great revival amongst our land. Lord, we know there are so many people who sin. We know all of us are guilty of this, but some have such wicked hearts. And we were saddened to hear it was a young person who attempted to murder two people in their boarding school in Devon over the last week. Lord, we pray very particularly for the person who is still in a critical condition. We pray again for the effect this will have on many people for years to come. We pray for comfort for those who have been affected or family members of those who have been affected. Lord, we just pray that you would bring peace into their hearts. And Lord, we thank you for each person here. We thank you that we can come together as a family and celebrate together as a family this morning. We do very particularly thank you for Stephen and Matthew as our prayer focuses. Stay close to them, we pray. And Lord, we thank you that we can say with confidence the words at the beginning of Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Again, we thank you that we can come to you and we can pray together, say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. So let's say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, we are going to pick up uh, our story again, so if you remember, uh, what had happened is Naaman, followed by his, uh, all his chariots and horses, had gone to Elisha's house, and Elisha's servant had come to him and told him that he needed to go and uh, clean himself seven times in the River Jordan. And as I said, we might have expected that Naaman would have gone off and done that rejoicing at the news he had been told. It was so simple. And yet that wasn't what happened. Actually, he was quite annoyed. He expected a bit more. He was an important person. And first of all, Elisha didn't even come and speak to him himself. He expected him to come, say some wonderful words and call on the name of God and put his hand over him. But he didn't do that. He just sent a messenger to him to speak to him. Maybe we can imagine what it's like. I had something not so very long ago. Um, I, like I know a few of us, have a ring doorbell. Uh, so this is the shop from mine outside the house. And one of the reasons I got it is because when I'm working up in my office, I went through a, a while where I kept having people coming to the door, either wanting to sell me something, or drill holes in my wall to do a survey, or try and help me with my tax, or all sorts of other things. And I was spending so much time up and down the stairs coming to speak to someone to find out, actually, I didn't need to waste the time. So I got a doorbell so I could speak to them from upstairs and see if I did actually need to go and speak to the person. So one day, uh, I answered the doorbell because it was uh, somebody who wanted to sell me something from one company or another. So the salesman asked if I would come down and speak to him in person. And I explained that actually I wasn't interested and I was very busy at work. So no, I wouldn't come down and speak to him in person. And he was very uh, upset because he wasn't happy that I would speak to him in person, but only by the doorbell. So much so that he came back later with somebody more senior in his company. And they both rang the doorbell and wanted me to come down and speak to them in person. And again, when I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm too busy working, they then wanted to find out if there was some other reason 
fails. What's I fear here? Or is I just trying to make out my distance? So maybe we can understand why Naaman was so upset and frustrated that Elisha wouldn't come and speak to them, but instead just sent his servant. He also wanted to know why couldn't he, why did he have to go to the Jordan to be cleaned? I mean, he's got plenty of nice rivers, arguably, he thought, better rivers in uh, Amon. Why not go there and dip himself in? So he was going off, let's be honest, in a bit of a huff. He wasn't happy, he was going to ignore everything he had been told. But then one of his servants spoke to him and said, Look, if this was, if he asked you to do something very long, uh, long and complicated to do, you probably would have done it very, very happily. You should give thanks that it's such a simple thing that you need to do. You just need to accept his words very simply and all will be well. I was thinking about this and it reminded me uh, of the words that Jesus said about accepting the kingdom of God. We, we try and add things to it and make it very complicated and want to do all sorts of things ourselves. But actually Jesus said, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Uh, never enter it. We need to approach very simply and just accept what we are told and give thanks for it, just as Naaman should have done. Eventually uh, his servant managed to win him over and he did go and do exactly uh, what he was told. He went and he dipped himself seven times uh, in the river Jordan. And he found that his skin was completely healed. It said his skin was like a young boy again. What a brilliant answer, a fantastic miracle of healing. Now I'm sure some of you might be starting to get a little bit fed up with me saying this, but some of us went to Israel recently and I was very pleased. I'd, I'd chosen this text to talk on before I went and what I did realise is we were actually going to go to the place possibly where this healing happened. So we did go back to the River Jordan, here it is. Um, I don't know if this is what it was like all those years ago, but we might see hints why uh, Naaman didn't want to dip himself uh, in the River Jordan. And I can tell you, it smelled worse than it looks, uh, is all I can say. Um, so this is where it happened. But it's interesting, there are lots of different things, several different things, that happened, they think, at this spot. And one of them does involve people coming and cleaning themselves in the water in a very special way. They think this is probably the spot where John the Baptist baptised people. And we know, of course, that included the Lord Jesus when he was baptised as well. How interesting, all those years later, that water was still being used for cleansing, but in a very different way. With Naaman, he did wash his skin in the water. With the people, with John the Baptist, they were baptised, they cleaned themselves, but it was a symbolic cleaning. Paul tells us, uh, or Luke tells us, that Paul, when he had first been converted and put his trust in Jesus, he was told, and now what are you waiting for? Get up. Be baptised and wash your sins away, calling on the name of Jesus. Because that is, of course, what we are able to do. Because Jesus came and died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, we can be cleansed. Our sins will be washed away. At the time, Naaman was thought of as unclean because of his skin condition. In a way, we are unclean because of the sins, the bad things we do when we don't put God first. But we can be washed clean when we trust in Jesus. When we come to him and ask for his forgiveness. How wonderful that we too can be cleaned and be right with our Father and have life everlasting because of Jesus' sacrifice. And that's why we remember it so often in different ways. Every service we mention it because it is so important. Well, it made a huge impact certainly on Naaman. He went back uh, to Elisha. He saw Elisha this time 
and he gave thanks for what had happened. And he realised the truth that there was only one God. Whoever he had been worshipping in his homeland, he knew he never would have had the power to do it. He couldn't exist. But this was the one true God, the one who Naaman believed in. So he said, from now on, I am going to worship him. In fact, he even took some soil back with him so he could build his own altar to worship God and think of him. And he asked for forgiveness for the times he knew he was going to have to go with his master, the king, and worship someone else. He said, I'm not really going to be doing it. I need to bow down just because that's my job. But I want you to know I want forgiveness for this. He is the one I trust in. And he did want to give uh, Elisha uh, some gifts. He'd taken some money and some clothes and uh, some things that were worth quite a lot of money. He said, let me give you money in thanks for what you've done for me. But Elisha said, no, this is a gift from God. You don't owe me anything. Just accept this wonderful gift. In just the same way that Jesus' death for us is a gift. We just have to accept it. We don't have to give anything back apart from our praise and worship, but that is in response to what he has done. We just accept it and give thanks. So again, we might think that this was the end of the, uh, of the story. He goes back happily ever after. But again, not quite. There is more still to come. But let us sing now in thanks that we can come just through God's great gift of grace. Only by grace can he enter. And he'd been watching everything that had happened, and he thought, 
I don't think this seems right. There's this guy, he's not even Jewish, he's not from Israel, he's come from somewhere else, he's had this wonderful healing, and he's not had to do anything for it. We've not benefited, benefited from it in any way. That's not right. So I am going to do something about this. I know he's got stuff that we could use. So he goes after him and runs to try and catch him up. And we're told that Naaman saw him and uh, immediately said, what's wrong? And he said, well, nothing's wrong. But there have been some unexpected guests turn up. And so actually we could really do with some of the stuff that you've offered. If you could give me this and uh, some of the clothes and some of this money. He said, gladly I'll do that and actually I'll give you more than you've asked for. And Gehazi went and took it and kind of hid it away so he uh, had it for himself. And then he went back to Elisha. And Elisha said, well, where have you been? And he said, oh, I haven't been anywhere. You know, I've just been pottering about doing a few uh, bits and pieces. But Elisha was God's prophet. And God enabled him to uh, know things that many of us wouldn't get to know. And he knew exactly what had happened. He said, wasn't my spirit with you when you went to Naaman and got him down out of his chariots? I know exactly what you've done. And it is a wicked thing. He was undermining everything that, uh, Naaman, uh, that Elisha tried to do. Remember we talked about God's free gifts of grace. It's the same when people say, it's not just by trusting in Jesus, you need to trust in Jesus, but you need to do this thing, or you need to do this, uh, this thing, or you need to pay a certain amount of money, or you need to show it in this way. No, it should have been a simple gift. And so, uh, Elisha said, actually, because of your actions and how wicked you were, Naaman's leprosy is now going to cling to you all the day of your life. And so Gehazi ended up with leprosy himself. It is a worry when we try and add things to what people need to do to come to Jesus. It is so simple. It is God's true gift. We just trust in Him. And we give thanks for that. And someone that certainly did give thanks was Gehazi. We are not Gehazi, sorry, uh, was Naaman. We're not told exactly what happened, but he had been cleansed, he'd been cured. He went home, and we can imagine that uh, he continued in his life. There is a lot that has happened in this one account. Lots of people with different reactions to different things. But surely one of the people that stand out most is that little girl. It's amazing. The Bible doesn't even tell us her name. But she made such a big impact and actually behaved so much better than many of the people that should have done. She had compassion on her master, and we know there may well have been reasons why she wouldn't want to do that. She'd been stolen away from her home, working as a servant, but she has compassion on him, and she speaks the truth and tells him about the prophet. It reminds us just how important it is to teach our young people, and why Sunday school is so important, so they know the truth and the impact it can make on them and on others. Think about that f first prayer subject we had earlier, that, that young girl of 13 who led her family through the Amazon jungle. Young people are capable of so much, we should never overlook that. We should support them and make sure they know the truth of Jesus Christ. She certainly knew the truth better than the king. He was just concerned about what this would mean for him. His mind didn't even go to Elisha for a second. She knew the truth. She knew that he would be able to help. We're not told that she did got any thanks for what she did particularly, and she didn't need anything. She's so much better than Gehazi, who wanted something. She acted so much better than him. And although it was, of course, Elisha that enabled him to be cleansed and healed, it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for her in the first place. What an amazing thing this is, we don't know what happened to her earlier, but we can see the importance of young people 
and telling them about our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why each year we want to have this celebration service, giving thanks for our Sunday school and celebrating every single person as part of it. And what we like to do as well as celebrating is we like to give a gift to all those people that are part of our Sunday school as well. So I'll ask Ruth to uh, come with me and help. Uh, we've got two groups in our Sunday school at the moment. So if the first group, which is the Bubbles group, would like to come up and bring their little slips of paper, please, uh, with your prayer requests in. You can just put it in that bowl for me on the front and then go to Ruth. Uh, so that is Esther, Felicity and Jonathan. And can we give them a round of applause? So let's give them a round of applause as well. for us to spend some time in prayer for our young people, so I've put their names there. We'll also remember the things that are important to them in prayer. Thank you very much. So let us uh, pray again. Dear Lord, we do thank you so much for the young people we have as part of our church family. We thank you for who they are, their very characters, and all they mean to us. And Lord, we thank you for the teachers that teach them as well, so they can learn about you and how we pray that you would send them your spirit and open their hearts to the truth, so they will indeed trust in Jesus for themselves. Lord, we name each one to you. We pray for your protection, we pray for your guidance over their lives, and we pray, as I've said, that they will turn to you. So we pray for Esther, Felicity and Jonathan, for Finn, for Jacob, for Thomas, for Lily, for Matthew, Sam and Dan. And Lord, we pray that there would be others who you would be preparing to come into our Sunday school, that there would be other families coming to come and bring their worship to you and to celebrate. And Lord, we pray that this time next year we would be uh, have even more young people to celebrate with. Lord, we thank you that we know each and every person in your creation is important to you. And you long to hear the prayers of all people, no matter what their age. And so we thank you that we can bring to you some of those things that are important to our young people. Lord, we thank you for how the exams have gone so far for some of them. We do thank you that you are with them, that you can give them peace. And we pray that that will continue. And we pray that you would just help give them, uh, not a clear mind, that's not what I mean, but you would give them uh, clarity in the things that they need to be thinking of. You would help them remember all the things they have learnt, and particularly that they would be happy with what they have done. <coughs> Lord, we thank you 
that you have made them exactly who you have made them, for their characters, for all they mean to us in different ways. Lord, we thank you that you make each one of us different, individual and unique. And we celebrate that and thank you. Lord, we do pray that you would help people look after your creation better. That you would make sure they are cleaning up after themselves and making the world a cleaner place. We thank you that you do give us a heart for other people. And we pray that we would look after other people as well. We do thank you for creating the wonderful world that you did. And we are so sorry that we so often cause issues for it through our sin. We do thank you that Jesus came and we can be forgiven of that sin. On how we look forward to a time when your creation is perfect again with the new heavens and the new earth. Lord, we thank you for families. And we thank you that each of our young people have loving parents who look after them. Bless them, we pray. And Lord, again, we thank you that we can come to you in this special way, knowing that you are pleased to hear our prayers and knowing that you will answer them in the way that is best for each one of us. We thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Making sure that we are catering for our young people, allowing them to learn about Jesus is so important to us. That's why we have Sunday school. It's why we have uh, treasure seekers. It's why we have our youth evenings. And there is one way in particular each year we do like to come together and help not that just those within our church family, but those within our town. And that is through our holiday Bible club. And so uh, we're really pleased that again this year between the 9th and 12th of August, we're going to be able to come together as part of the Secret Agents Academy. And please be praying for that now. Be praying for the young people who God is preparing to come along. Pray for our preparations as we try and get everything ready, all the stories, all the uh, different things that we need, the crafts, the games, and everything. Pray for weather for the Saturday so we have a good time together. Last year, it was glorious weather. We had a great time with uh, our the young people and their parents, it would be great to have a repeat of that this time. There are some sign-up sheets that are going to be uh, appearing later today, so you can sign up to help in different ways. Do please keep hold of things that could be used for junk modelling, it would be great to have that. And something we are particularly looking out for is if you have any old hats or gloves that you don't need anymore and you don't mind being cut up and used for different things, uh, can you save them? and uh, give them to us at the right time. Some of us may remember we have some rather fetching white baseball caps with dodgy iron transfers that might be perfect for such a thing. So uh, do please keep praying and remembering. Uh, we are going to have leaflets in due course. Do please think about, have you got neighbours, people living around you, you could drop something through the door? Have you got colleagues who have children that you could invite them? It would be great to have a really good number of young people this year. We do want to do that because we know each and every person, young or old, does belong to our God. They are people of the risen King. So we will sing in celebration become people of the risen King.
Well, thank you very much for coming and joining uh, with us as we celebrate this morning. We're not finishing there. Uh, we will go over to the hall and have some uh, refreshments. Um, I think I need to tell you that we don't have any hot drinks because nothing is working. Uh, but there are cold drinks available, so do come and join us for that. And then we will have lunch together. Uh, and so do please uh, come and stay, even if you, uh, you've forgotten or couldn't remember or haven't been able to bring food, I'm sure there will be plenty, so do please stay and join with us as we continue the time of celebration. And then later on this evening, at 6.30 on Zoom, uh, we'll be gathering together and thinking about an issue that I think is going to continue to be uh, an important one for the church to deal with uh, over the coming uh, years particularly. So do please join with us this evening, 6.30 on Zoom, if you are able to. But we're going to finish in prayer. Dear Lord, we do thank you so much that we have been able to come and celebrate with our young people. And we do raise them to you again. Please help us to remain uh, mindful of them and praying for them regularly, not just at one service once a year or as we've got Holiday Bible Club, but continually. We do thank you so much that we are all your children and we know that they can show us so much as well as what we can teach them about you. So we do thank you and praise you. We thank you that we can come together and continue to celebrate, uh, celebrate as a family coming together around a meal. And we pray that you'd be with us in that, that we would have a great time together. And we do thank you uh, for that food. And we just thank you for your provision to us in so many ways. So Lord, we do give you our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus Christ, who is each one of our Saviour when we turn to him. So we thank you in his name. Amen.